Hey, what's up guys? Now I see quite a lot of you found the idea of retesting older GPUs or older hardware in general interesting. So previously I've revisited ATI's 9 year old Radeon HD 4890. Today however I have something younger for you guys. Meet the Nvidia GTX 550 Ti. I'm gonna pop this onto my modern test bench and we'll run some more or less recent game titles with it you would play in 2018. So has the 550 Ti aged well or is it quite the opposite? Let's find out. The specific graphics card I have here today is the ENG TX 550 Ti DC slash oh god no simplified it's the ASUS GeForce GTX 550 Ti Direct CU. It was released in March 2011 making this GPU almost 7 years old. Oh how time flies by. For 2011's mid range standards it was a pretty good card actually in terms of specs that is. Initially it was just a DX11 card but Nvidia apparently had some mercy with us and obviously possibilities to get DX12 working making this a very interesting GPU indeed. Now this is my test system. First off the installation of drivers in Windows 10 no problem at all. Nvidia does still support the 7 year old GPU. To get things started Battlefield 1. I'm gonna set the resolution to 720p no HDR or DX12 and the graphics preset let's go for low. Now as you can see with roughly 47 frames per second that's not too bad actually. Definitely playable. Just for fun let's try out 1080p real quick. We're at 28 fps on average now which in my opinion is not playable anymore. Crisis 3 at 720p lowest settings on the other hand is a really nice surprise. 78 fps on average that's fantastic that's running really well. Which is why I did try out 1080p as well. Although performance does take a hit 43 fps can still be considered playable right? As for doom 720p opengl and the rest on low 35 fps not that great of an experience but to some decent enough results I'm sure. Of course you can't expect Far Cry Primal to run smoothly. With the settings at 720p and low I'm getting about 34 fps. To me that's not playable sorry. And now to one of my favorite games ever GTA 5. Settings are at 720p DX11 everything else at normal no AA. And would you look at that 90 frames per second. Second. However the game certainly not looking quite as nice as on my main rig. <laughs> so let's crank up the resolution to 1080p then right? Now I'm down to the 60s or high 50s. Actually it's 58 fps on average which is ok. So this is a game you for sure could still play with the 550 Ti. Ok next up is Rise of the Tomb Raider. 720p again, DX12 disabled and as for the preset it's set to lowest. At those settings I'm at about 38 fps which for this type of a game doesn't make up for it too good experience honestly. Something that can't be missed is Skyrim Special Edition. Again 720p AA turned off, nah let's go for low with FXAA. And 67 fps aren't too shabby. Very playable indeed. So let's try to go a little higher let's set this to 1080p. Now we are getting about 43 fps on average which to most of you for some reason is still playable perfectly fine. For me it's a little too low I'd rather lower the resolution a bit. And now to the final game of my test run The Witcher 3. 720p of course, low preset and low for post processing too. This game is running with 35 fps on average and just imagine the decrease if we get into some fights here. So at the end of the day I honestly was surprised this almost 7 year old GTX 550 Ti by Nvidia can still somewhat handle those fairly modern game titles. Most of those you're in the 30s or 40s in terms of frame rate and you mostly have to play at 720p and very low settings. Still there surely are plenty of games this card can tackle just fine. GTA 5 surprisingly isn't too GPU hungry which makes playing this specific game title possible even at 1080p. But it of course goes without saying it's not a graphics card you should try to get in 2018 if you want cheap performance. There probably are better deals out there. Well I hope you've enjoyed this experiment. Stay tuned for the next one with the ATI Radeon HD 5770. And as always, thanks for watching.